Hey guys, welcome to another episode of iOS Developer Diaries. And today I'm going to be talking about how you, you out there, can make some easy money on the iOS App Store. <laughs> I released an app, Multicam Pro, and it allows you to record front and back cameras at the same time. And this currently, as of today, is my most, was it paid? I'm making the most money from this app at the moment. Now, I'm not a rich dude. I'm not even in a... I'm not even going to tell you how much money I'm making because it's pathetic, but it's the most money I've made this week and it's on this app, yeah, which is a milestone for me. Very proud of this moment. And I've got to tell you something. This was the easiest project I've probably ever done in my life. Go on Google right now, type in Apple Developer Multicam, and you're going to get this page. It's called Introducing Multicamera Capture on iOS 13. And right there, there's a link to download sample code. Apple actually give you free sample code to show you exactly how to record the front and back cameras at the same time. And they've had this available for free since, since July? July or June, la June, June last year. So it's been there for free. Now me personally, I don't have an iPhone 11. I had to borrow my wife's one and I wasn't able to access iOS 13 for the last six months, for the, for the last amount of months that it's been out. So I never touched this, this project. But as soon as my wife got her iPhone 11, I, I got one too, but I returned it because it had too much radiation, but she kept hers. And as soon as I, I got it, I spent like a, a few, like a day, probably more, more, more than that, but it's kind of like maybe 12 hours in total so far. But it did require a lot of mental work, maybe 24 hours in total, let's just say. But it was pretty much a day hackathon. I spent a personal hackathon. And I did some bad decisions maybe, what the public didn't want. Me personally, I didn't like that the sample code stitched both front and pack, back videos together. So I made it spit out the video files as separate streams. And I kind of I added a bit of polish and I made it a bit nicer. And I made it also work on older iPhones, not the multicams, but by default it just says, not available, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you try using a, a, an iPhone with an A12 less, with a less than A12 uh, processor, I'm rambling. Anyway, pretty much spent a day, ironed it out, added in in-app purchases for the pro level for unlimited recording or extended recording as I called it. And uh, it's now currently my most paid app. A one day frigging project. And I'll be honest with you, I wasn't expecting anyone to download it. I wasn't expecting anyone to use it. On the iPhone release date, uh, Filmic Pro had an advert showing how amazing it can record multicam. And pretty much everyone online that I saw was complaining that it wasn't out yet and they didn't know too much about it. And I obviously have been looking at the sample code for the last six, four months. And uh, I've known that I've watched a lecture and the lecture says that you can't record 4K, you can only record up to 1440p and all that kind of stuff. So I was aware of the technical limitations. So I wasn't quite sure why Film Cry hasn't released it, but pretty much I just said, you know what, let me release it. It's out and about and shaking it. Now, regarding the decisions that I made, I wanted to split out the footage into separate streams so I can play around in, my, in iMovie and Final Cut Pro to edit it myself. However, I got a one-star review saying, it doesn't support stitching the videos together automatically. It requires post-production. And I was like, mate, give me a second, bro. And within a couple of hours, I released an update and Apple approved it and all that stuff. And it was there, but the one-star review lives forever. And I got another one-star review saying pretty much the same thing. And I got a couple of five-star reviews. I got a five-star review saying, great, needs improvement. Can you do, can you flip the screen on the front-facing camera? And for me, I had it. So when you tap, when you tap on the second screen, it flips the cameras around, but it wasn't intuitive. So if you want to do something that isn't intuitive, just make sure there's an icon or some sort of launch screen to tell you exactly how to use it. I was kind of like rambling, but because I only spent like a minimal time on this project, I didn't even do that. And the icons are pretty pathetic. So I need to improve this and I am improving this actually. I, I have um, a big, big passion for videography. I've actually dreamed of an app to allow you to record the front and back cameras at the same time. So this is actually something that I'm actually building out and I've already got some great feature requests and that's splitting up the views in different ways and AirPod support, so I'm going to be working on that. So I'm actually passionate about this project and I'm even more so passionate about this project because 
people are actually downloading and using this app. So it's my most downloaded app as of this week, for just this week duration, and it's my most paid app. So that, very excited about that. I wanna work on it more, but something that I've learned from my experience from making iOS apps is that you need to calm, you need to have a strategy with releases. You can't just release, 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 release. You need to like pad it out, like have one release a week or one release every two weeks just to build some sort of momentum. And the best thing about releasing apps today is that Apple's review times are like about one day. I was surprised how quickly they turned around and released my application. And I, I also, I snuck in an Easter egg. No one's uh, actually gonna spot it. All right, I'll tell you, this is exclusive. It's probably gonna get me banned from the Apple Store. On my advert video for the app, I actually have my Samsung <laughs> Galaxy Note in it. <laughs> I only got it for a couple of frames, but I snuck it through the review team, so I'm happy about that. And that is something I want you guys to know, is that it's not just about coding an app and writing a description and the tags and the name. You have to do that and make sure in your name, you put in the feature that it is addressing. For example, if it's a camera, don't call it best ever app, call it something with the word camera, talk, whatever. It needs to have the word of the utility that it's doing so people can find it. And just go through the app store yourself as a user, put yourself in that perspective and just look through the apps. You're gonna notice something. The apps that, drawn, that are drawn to you, they have, they have good screenshots. And you know, I know you're probably really happy that you made a login screen and you have to develop the server and all that stuff, but nobody wants to see it. Just show some nice pictures. Think about the icons in it. Think about the colors that you use. Just look, imagine, imagine that photograph in that feed as, as an iOS iPhone user scrolling up and down. Well, will that let the user stop and click on your app to download? Just think about that. And if you have a good picture, you're more likely to draw more users in than a better app. And you guys probably have an advantage because you're watching me and I'm speaking English. So if you're English speaking, you're probably clued up with the culture. And if you go to like, for example, Japan, Japanese websites, they're, they're, they're a mess. You go to Egypt, Egyptian websites, they're a mess. They're like prehistoric. So there is something about advertisement in Western society. They really teach you and they play with it. Just, just copy the templates and the style and I'm sure people will start downloading it. And I don't even know about the rest of it. I've never paid for adverts. I wish I, I did. I see other people doing it. I just don't know the avenue. Um, maybe someone needs to teach me out there. I've never been that good about it or I've always been about an organic kind of growth kind of guy. Um, maybe one day I'll figure out and boost my ranks. But yeah, focus on a bit of marketing. Just polish how it looks, not just how it works. So I'm, I, I'm gonna have to work a bit more on this project, which is a good thing, but pretty much, just telling you right here, Apple developer, they have so many sample codes out there. I had a question before on my last video. Someone was saying they wanted to build a streaming audio streaming app. And mate, if you just Google streaming app space GitHub iOS, you're gonna get sample code that does it for you. You just need to polish it up a bit, have a sort of business strategy around it and publish it. But I just wanna let you know that people don't like paying for apps. <laughs> especially on Android. Android, people don't like paying for apps. So on iOS, people really don't like paying for apps. Like I, I got um, a, a review, some guy was saying, oh, it requires payment to use it. And I'm like, yeah, so <laughs> what's your complaint? <laughs> so people don't like paying for apps. So will you make money making an app? That is you and your luck and your business strategy but you can make some money, and I hope this video has inspired you to just go out there, go through the sample code, and if you find any sample code that you feel passionate about, for example, this multi-camera capture stuff, hack away at it, and you can build up a nice feature set for it. All right, hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below, and if you want more technical deep dives into the actual source code, let me know, more than happy to do that. But I just figured I'd throw in some uploading of some information today to hopefully brighten up and make you guys a bit more encouraged about how to make money on the app store.